Hey there, it's Paul Halliday and we're going to look at web scraping with Node.js and X-Ray. I've created a simple express application named Super Awesome Trees, which has some basic HTML that we can scrape quickly and easily. So we have stuff like a H1, which is Super Awesome Trees, the title of the site. We also have some divs with the class of trees Inside the trees div is another div with the class of title. And then we have a H2 inside of that. Then we have things like images, paragraphs, and so on. To make this even more interesting, our second div doesn't have the div that wraps the H2, but it has all the other information. To get started, simply run npm init-y to make a new package.json. And then we can make our index.js file. So touch index.js. We will need a couple of packages to get started. So run npm install x-ray. We'll also need request because we're going to be saving these images to the file system. So npm install request. And then I'm going to open it up in VS Code. So the first thing that I'm going to do is head over to package.json and I'm going to add a new script. So let's make a start script that simply runs node index.js. That means every time we type npm start in the terminal, it'll start our scraper. We can then head over to index.js and we can start importing the projects that we'll be using. So we can use const xray and require xray we can then use const request and require request. We'll also need access to the file system. So let's do const fs and require fs. And now we can make a new xray. So we can use that to scrape the local host site that we've created. So we use const xray is a new xray. What we can then do is use that xray object and pass it in a particular source. The source will be HTTP localhost 3000. This won't work for you unless you've got a current project open at localhost 3000. You'll have to use a site of your choosing or simply replicate what I've done here. Then we need to pass in a scope. So I'm simply going to say H1 so that we can access the super awesome trees h1 tag inside of our body. We're going to be mapping this out to a JSON file. So I'm then going to add it to an array. And we're simply going to say title is equal to the response of this h1 tag here. This will make sense in a second. And then we can write this to the file. So results.json will write that too. We can then run npm start in the terminal. And we see we get a results.json. If we open this to the side, we can see that we accurately got the title Super Awesome Trees. Let's say we want to use a div as the selector. And now if we run it again, npm start, we see we get a variety of different information. We get both the title of the tree and then we get the paragraph tag within the div. Obviously, this is not what we want. So we need to essentially put title to be equal to H2, as we can see. And then we want to make content equal to P, and that's our paragraph tag. So if we run this again, we see we get title is tree one, tree two, tree three. And then we also get content, which is the paragraphs tags within the div. You'll notice that for both title one and title three, that this is replicated. This was done on purpose to show you that H2 for tree two is not wrapped in a div. So it doesn't pick up that particular title twice, but it does because we're asking for every one of the divs and then we're simply putting the H2s out to this title column. If we wanted to get a little bit more specific, we could simply say div dot title 
and that would find the title class within a div. So if we run this, we see we get tree one because inside of the div, we are getting the title class for the H2. For tree two, there is no div with the class of title. And for tree three, we actually have an ID. So we can do the same for an ID. So if we run it again, we get tree three. Alternatively, we could use the selector dot trees, so the trees class, and you find that we get tree one, tree two, and tree three. That's because it treats each one of these equally, and every one of them have a H2 and a P tag. We can return images as well, so we could say image. And then to get the source, we could use image and use the selector source. If we run this again, you see we get the https pixels.com slash the nature file for each single one of our trees. Xvira also gives a callback function with this data. So we can use this data to perform particular options like download these images or do something else with the data. So we can use the callback here function and then we have error and results. For now, we'll simply log out the results. And you see inside our terminal, we can see tree one, content, image, and so on. We can download the images by using the request library, by doing a for each on the results, by saying results dot for each. And then we want to make a function with the results and the index. Then we can simply use request now we need to pass in the URI, so this would be the result.image. And then we can use the .pipe method and the fs to create write stream. So we want to write this to the file. And then we want to put the index, so that's the current index of in the array. So it'll be 0, 1, 2, plus .jpg. So it'll be called 0.jpg. 1.jpg and 2.jpg. If we run this, it should work. We can then see in our file system that we got 0.jpg, 1.jpg and 2.jpg. If we open them, we can see it's the first tree, the second tree and the third tree. If we wanted to, we could filter the results for one particular tree and we could do that by running results is equal to results.filter and then we want to return only when the result.title includes tree2. So that will essentially only return when tree2 is in the title. Then we can hook into our for each function like so and only download the picture for tree2. To prove this works, we can delete the current trees and then run our file again. We can then see that we have 0.jpg and when we open the file, it is tree2. So I hope you found this video useful in getting started web scraping using Node and X-Ray. If you did, hit that subscribe button because there's many more videos on the way. And until then, I'll see you in the next video.